Alright, good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Mayhem Monday, baby. Let's go. I got a special conversation today, right? Last week, I talked a lot about the secret sauce. And more specifically, your secret sauce. And I thought this week would be a perfect week to now start discussing the recipe. Right, so that's what I'm going to be getting into today. That's what I'm going to be getting into this week. Right, really putting together, you know, let's say you find it out, right? Let's say you got your secret sauce, right? How do we start putting that secret sauce into action? And that's what this week's all about. So happy Monday. Let's go. Today, I'm going to be having a special conversation about the recipe. And the first ingredient is having that burning desire, right? When you can develop that burning desire, this state of mind where you are so obsessed with what you want, Right, you're already on your way to great things. So I hope everyone is having an incredible Monday morning. And let's get right into it. Right, so a burning desire. What does it mean to have a burning desire? What does it mean to become obsessed with your dream? What does it mean to become obsessed with your goal? Right, what is that state of mind that I'm talking about when I'm talking about a burning desire? Right. And, and it, you know, it really does start with figuring out, well, what do you really want? Because how can you possibly become obsessed with doing something that you don't truly want? Right. Yeah, I get it. You know, we all have these jobs and these jobs seem like they're fantastic jobs. But at the end of the day, is working for the man really what you want? Right. How do you become obsessed? How do you develop that burning desire to get rich? Well, first, it starts with figuring out what do you really want, okay? And, you know, I, I think a lot of people, you know, they see a lot of things online. They want to start that side hustle. They want to start that business, but they might be thinking, oh, you know, I don't have the energy for that, right? I don't have the energy. They'll, you'll hear people say, I don't have the energy for that. What the hell do you mean you don't have the energy for that? Right? Do you realize, right, I have... Do you realize that you're the, the, how do I say this? That you can literally light up New York City with the cells in your body itself, right? I have absolutely no fucking science to back that up, but I'm telling you, you have the energy, right? Oh, I don't have the energy to do this. Man, I can't start that side hustle. I can't start that business. I don't have the energy for that. Man, that's bullshit. That is a BS story that you are telling yourself. You don't have the energy, my ass. Man, I don't have the energy to be poor. I don't have the energy to be middle class, right? It takes just as much energy to think big as it does to think small, right? Bob Proctor says, if you're going to worry about anything, worry about the fact that you are going to get too rich, right? So when you develop, when you start to understand this idea of having a burning desire, right? All of a sudden you realize you will find the energy, right? All that stuff about, um, you know, not thinking that you have it in you. No, you have it in you. You will find the energy to do it. You will find the discipline to do it. You just got to figure out, you know, exactly what you want and start developing this burning desire to go out there and get it, right? Uh, Napoleon Hill says it in his book, Thinking Grow Rich, right? A lot of people will wish for riches, right? A lot of people, everyone out there is wishing for riches, but few understand that wishing will not bring you riches, Right, he says that riches, when they come, come by definite demands backed by burning desires with continuous, persistent action that recognizes no such thing as failure. Right, it, it starts with the definite major purpose and then having a burning desire to go achieve that purpose. Right, you'll find the energy, and, and people might be wondering, like, how do you, how do you stay disciplined? How do you stay energized? How do you do this? Right, it's because I started with a burning desire, right? This is the recipe. This is the recipe. I can talk about, you know, what strategy is going to work, what business model is going to work. No, what, what's going to work is, is developing a state of mind first. What's going to work is having that mindset that I'm going to figure it out, that I'm going to find a way to get rich, right? It's, it's, it starts with your state of mind. And when you start focusing from, you know, just getting all the time and, and so on and so forth, and you start focusing on developing this mindset, right? You know, Napoleon Hill, when he wrote Thinking Grow Rich, it was, it was to help you start developing this money consciousness. And basically, you know, 
what a money consciousness is, is like you just become more and more aware of the opportunities all around you of how to earn money, right? It's all around us, right? Let's face it. The internet has made making money so much more possible than any other time in the world, right? It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter what race, what religion, what gender you are. You all have the equal chance to make money online. The only thing that we lack is we lack awareness, right? We lack the the awareness that, you know, there is opportunities out there, right? It's literally right in front of your nose. And, you know, the, the thing is, right, society is so programmed of this consumer cons uh, society, where we're all programmed to just buy things, right? We're programmed to go on Amazon and start ordering things, start buying things online, start buying what we think will bring us happiness, right? Everyone is so programmed for consumerism, but then all of a sudden, when you can flip the switch and start changing your state of mind to becoming a master salesman, to becoming a professional salesman, you start realizing, man, if 95% of the world is so focused on consuming, then what can I start selling to them? And that's what's fantastic about it, right? Especially with e-commerce, right? You got to realize it is, it is like if everyone is so obsessed with, with buying on Amazon, Right? How can I get on the other side of the coin and start selling on Amazon? How can I start selling to these people's addictions to like religiously buying online? Right? It's about developing this money consciousness. And, and in order to do so, you have to start by first developing a burning desire for more. Right? A burning desire for more of what you want and less of what you don't. Hello, lady boss. Right? It all starts with a burning desire. That's the first ingredient in the recipe, right? Because the only thing that we are currently lacking is awareness. And in order to start achieving more awareness, we need to have a desire to achieve that more awareness, right? It starts with wanting a desire for more of what you want. And that is absolutely critical, right? Becoming obsessed with what you want, figuring out, you know, what is the life that you want to live, right? What is the life for you and your family that you want to live. That's where it really starts. And getting crystal clear on that, getting crystal clear on what do you really want, becoming obsessed with it, right? It's it, The answer is out there. The answer is out there. We're just simply not asking the right questions. We're not asking the right questions. We don't yet have, like Lady Boss Nikki says, we don't yet have our definite major purpose. And once you get crystal clear about your definite major purpose, once you start really working on this idea of what do I truly want, all of a sudden, you know, your reticular activating system will start working. But we have to realize we have one of the greatest mechanisms in between our two ears, and that is our brain. And we have the ability, but we are given this gift of our incredible brain, and we can absolutely find the answers to anything that we want. We just have to start asking ourselves the right questions. And in order to start asking the right questions, we have to start with that burning desire for more. Because that burning desire is going to change our state of mind, which is going to change the way that we look at things, which is going to change the questions that we ask ourselves, right? It starts with the state of mind. Right, It's not about the strategy. There's so many strategies out there. There's so many different ways for you to have more of what you want. Right, But you know, they're not, none of them are going to work unless you start with yourself first. Right? Start working on yourself first. Start working on you know, who am I? What am I really about? What are my values? What is most important to me? Right? And when you get those in order, then all of a sudden, you know, the right strategy will show up for you. And for many people, right, they just simply don't have their values in order. And that comes first and foremost. So there's there's really important um, components to the recipe. And I'm really glad to talk about a burning desire. Now, one additional thing that I really want to talk about with the burning desire is how do we continue to keep that state of mind known as a burning desire, right? Yes, everyone's been there where they had these moments. Yes, I want more. I want more. I want more. And then all of a sudden, the feeling fades, right? The discipline's not there, and we lose the feeling of that burning desire, right? How do we maintain that state of mind known as a burning desire? And Napoleon Hill actually said it in the book, Thinking Real Rich. In the chapter on desire, he wrote a story about these soldiers. They were, let's say there was a hundred of their soldiers that, that uh, flew to this island on boats. And when they arrived on the shore, they saw that the island, the natives on the island outnumbered them 10 to 1. Right. There was a thousand islanders, let's say. 
They outnumber them 10 to 1. And the general of the boats told his troops to look behind them, and behind them was their ships being burnt. Right? So what the general did was he burned all forms of retreat, and he looked at his soldiers, and he said to them, Listen, soldiers, we're either going to take over the island, or we will perish. And you know what they ended up doing? They ended up taking over the island. You know why? Because they burned all their ships. Right? They burned all forms of retreat, and they took over the island. Because they had a burning desire and they burned all forms of retreat so that they only had one path. It was either they win or they perish. And, and that's, that's gotta be the same for you. Right? That's gotta be the same for your goals, right? It's either, you know, I'm going all in on this and I'm not looking back, right? There is no other option because when we give ourselves another option, when we give ourselves, oh, you know, maybe I can just work for the man, right? Then it's like, okay, you know, there's always a place to fall back and we don't go all in, right? It's the, it's the, the people, that you see, that really make it, that really are on the TV, that are making it in this world, are the people that went all in, right? If you don't need to know what the how is. You don't need to know how you're going to get there. You just need to know, no, I have this state of mind of a burning desire. I'm going all in. There's no other options, and I'm going to figure it out, right? It all starts with your state of mind, known as a burning desire, right? That is the most, that is the first and foremost important ingredient in the recipe, Figuring out what you want, having the, the burning desire to go get that, and there's no other options. Because that's how you maintain that, that state of mind. Because there's been so many people, and myself included, right, we all have that feeling in our chest, right? I want more out of life, but then it's like the fear and doubt shows up. Oh, I can't get that. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, man, maybe this excuse and that excuse. No. The only way to get rid of all these excuses is to be like, no, I don't care, you know, what the negative self-talk is saying, I am doing this, I am sticking to it, and I need to start working on my self-discipline. Right? Bob Proctor says that self-discipline is the ability to give yourself a command and follow through with it. Right? So how do you start working on your self-discipline? Well, actually, one of the faculties of your mind is the willpower. And you can start focusing on, you know, it's, it's like, I'm going on a tangent here, but it's all part of the inner game. Right? It is all a part of the inner game and it is all a part of your mindset and how you use your attention and f exactly following through, right? Following through on your will, like following through and focus, right? What is, what is, um, what is focus? It's focus on one course until successful, right? So what I'm saying, right? The self-discipline, right? And, and you know, it, it's going to take you to acquire some, some successful habits, Right. One of the things that has really helped me out in my life personally was developing the little habits, right? It's the little things that add up to the big things, right? Waking up at 5 a.m. every morning has helped me in so many ways get to the bigger fish in the, in the later in the life because, you know, the, the little wins show you that you can do it. You start getting that positive feedback, that positive momentum going. And all of a sudden you can start tackling the next little win. And then the next little win and the next little win. And all of a sudden, you're able to now become a public speaker and, and do all the things that most people wish they can do. And they actually wonder how you are able to do it. It's because I focus on the self-discipline of consistent action of the little things that allowed me the confidence to get to the bigger things. right? And, and the reason that this is, this is something that most people don't talk about is because most people don't realize right, they needed a mentor to get them there. Right? I didn't understand, um, for example, like, I didn't understand the importance of waking up at 5 a.m. How is this going to help me, you know, become a public speaker? Right? I needed someone to help guide me there. And, and that's where the importance of a mentor comes into play. Right? And, and you know, they say this, right? The, the mentor, when the student is ready, the mentor will appear. Right? When the student is ready, the mentor will appear. But when you start developing this burning desire for more, but all of a sudden, you'll realize, man, maybe I should start seeking out people that have the results that I want. Maybe I should start seeking out the, the advice of people that are already where I want to be. Because let's face it, right? No matter what it is that you want, there's probably someone out there that has already accomplished it. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if you want to own your own restaurant, if you want to own your own hotel, if you want to own your own island. There's probably someone out there that has already done it. Right, so when the student is ready, the mentor will appear. When you develop, when you figure out what you want and you develop this burning desire to go get it, 
all of a sudden you'll realize, okay, maybe I should start seeking out the advice from people that have the results that I want, that people that have the life that I want. And, and then the mentor will appear, right? They say on the hero's journey, right? It's, it's the refusal of the call, right? The, let's say you finally get a mentor and he tells you, you know, this is what you got to do, but you know, I refuse the call. And it's like, I can't complete the hero's journey until I finally accept the challenge of what I was destined to do in this world. And, and when I finally have the guts to be like, you know what? I don't know how I'm going to get that, but I know that I have this state of mind that is backed with my definite major purpose and I have a burning desire for that purpose and I've burned all the ships behind me so there's no going back, right? That's how you keep it going. That's how you start finally accepting the call, the call on your hero's journey and then you start going and you're going to figure it out on your way, right? There's no such thing as I don't have enough energy for that. You have absolutely all the abundant energy in the world to go achieve it. You just haven't accessed it yet because you didn't yet have a burning desire to go get it. And where am I going with this, right? What I'm saying is, right, you will figure it out. Even though I don't know how yet, even though I don't know exactly what the parts are, I know that I have, I am going to figure it out. I have to figure it out. I get to figure it out because there's no going back. There is no going back to the old way, right? I'm in the frontier right now and there's no going back. And I just know that, you know, whatever comes my way, whatever comes my way, I will end up figuring it out. And even if I am hit with temporary defeat, I know that that is a blessing in disguise because Napoleon Hill says that every failure, every time you experience temporary defeat, it comes with it, the seed of an equivalent advantage, right? So as long as you start changing the rules of the game, as long as you start changing the way that you look at failure from, you know, man, I've really got knocked down to, okay, as long as I learn a lesson from each one of these temporary defeats, I know that I'm going to win, right? When you change the rules of the game to, okay, as long as I find the lesson, I know I'm going to win, that's when all of a sudden the game becomes winnable, right? This is all a metaphor. This whole life experience is a game. And you got to make the game winnable, right? Make it winnable for you. And the way that you make it winnable is you start changing the rules of the game, right? The fact that you woke up this morning and your two feet hit the ground this morning meant that you won the game of, of life last night. That meant that you won the game and you were able to wake up and live and enjoy today already. Right? So you make the game winnable. And then when you start looking at life like a game, right, it changes it. Because what kind of game is fun without the challenges, without the obstacles, without the, the boss levels? Right? What kind of game is fun without that stuff? Right? And you start changing the way that you look at each situation in life to become, okay, you know, I'm at this level, right? New levels, new devils, right? I'm, I'm facing this challenge, but you know what? It's part of the game, right? When I, when I start looking at life like that, I absolutely love life, right? My life is, is so much more fun when I'm looking at it like that. Oh, why? Instead of me saying, oh, why has this happened to me? Oh, why? Does this have to happen? Oh man, why can't I? Blah, blah, blah. Right? None of that is gonna, gonna help me. But we gotta start looking at life in a way that's gonna help you actually truly feel fulfilled and enjoy life and live it up to the fullest because you know, you deserve that. So, to reiterate the conversation today, where we talked about the recipe and the first part of the recipe is having a burning desire. Right? And the only way that you can have a burning desire is by going after something that you want. Right. And, and this is really important to understand because a lot of people, they're like, man, why don't I have it in me? But right? why am I not working as hard as everyone else? It's because maybe you're not doing what you truly love to do. And then it comes to the idea of, of really getting clear. OK, what do I truly love? Because when you truly when you are truly doing something that you love to do, right, the, it, it's, it's just natural. Right. The energy is there. Right? It, it feels all natural to you. So so that's the importance of having a burning desire. And then more importantly, right, we got to start focusing on the discipline to maintain that state of mind known as a burning desire. And there is one specific way that Napoleon Hill mentions to do that. And that is to burn all the ships of retreat or right? when you burn all the ships of retreat, there's no other way. It's either you are going to do this. There's, there's no other option. There's no or. 
And, and that's where you are like, okay, you know what? As long as I am definite about my purpose and I have a burning desire to achieve it, I know that I am going there. And with that being said, you're already on your way too. So I want to thank you all for watching. Thank you, Lady Boss Nikki, for being here. And I will see you all tomorrow, same time, same channel. And we are going to continue on the conversation of the recipe. So I love you all and I'll uh, see you soon. Bye for now.